Hello and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. My name's Kinetic and today I'm going to show you how to create uh, HDR scenes or a basic HDR setup so you can then do HDR renders with objects. Right, the first thing we need to do to get it set up is we need to actually put into your scene is we need to do, uh, put a floor into your scene so get our object scene and floor and we just want to leave it as uh, the same height that we got there and the other object we want to do is we want to create just the basic sphere uh, once we've created our basic sphere all I wanted you to do is grab the resizing control and resize the sphere so it's quite big and it relatively covers the whole scene you're going to work with alright very good the next thing we need to do is we need to create a new material which hosts our HDR probe so in the material browser down here we just want to go to file new material and we'll get our material here now the thing with this material is that it's not like other materials where you have your color and your specular so what I want you to do is I just want to turn want you to turn off your color and your specular and turn on your luminance control now your luminance control should be the only one selected at this point if any other one is selected uncheck the tick box Right now what we're going to do is that assuming that you have the HDR probes like we have here I have a kitchen HDR probe what I want you to do here is before we can actually use a HDR probe if you do not if you haven't converted it so we want to go to render and convert HDR probe and what we want to do is I'm just going to go into my uh, HDR folder and I've got my kitchen probe here now usually when you haven't converted it yet you'll have just a kitchen probe here we just want to select kitchen probe for example here and we'll click open now what will happen is it will convert this and the texture box should come up like this once it opens up all I want you to do is just close that window because we don't need anything special and then uh, going back to our texture here I just want you to click on this little arrow here and what we want to do is we want to get a layered image and we want to go into our HDR folder and in that folder after we've actually converted our HDR probe we'll have a file called whatever the original file was called and then con written after it so if my probe was kitchen probe con kitchen probe it will now be called kitchen probe con just like here you want to select that file and hit open if you get a box like this just hit yes if you're on a Macintosh, it may be the other way around. You might have to hit no to get it to work. Right, now that we've actually got our uh, HDR probe set on our texture, what I want you to do is we that texture is really much too bright for use as a HDR. So for the brightness, all we want to do is we want to turn it all the way down to zero. And for our mix mode here, we just want to leave that on normal, but turn our mix strength down to 50%, which would slightly darken our uh, HDR probe there but uh, that's which is roughly about what we want if you want it a little bit lighter just turn it up our mix strength up a little bit but don't set it too bright because if you set it too bright your render will be coming out blotchy right the other thing we need to do is we need to create another texture so you get a file new material in the materials browser and what we want to do is we just want to rename this to reflective uh, what we also want to do is for this texture we'll set the color on it and we'll also set the reflection on there as well as well as the specular just for the moment we'll leave the color the same uh, we'll go to the reflection tab now that reflection is much much too strong so what we want to do is we want to actually turn that down just a bit uh, we don't want to turn it down too much but I'd recommend turning it down to around about 10%. Uh, you can up the blurriness if you like, but at the moment we're not going to be touching that. Now the specular mm, is probably not really that much necessary, but depending on how much shine uh, you want on it, just play around with the specular. So I'm pretty happy with how that is right there. And we also need another material which in the basic we just want to check reflection but this time we also want to check the bump menu as well and what we also want to do with this is get rid of specular since specular won't be needed for this 
uh, just go to the reflection tab and turn it down to roughly about 6% on the brightness of the reflection and go to the bump menu hit the arrow and the effect we want to apply to that is a noise gradient which is under here and if we don't want that noise gradient too strong just apply it to uh, around about 2 or 3 percent it doesn't matter whether you want it 2 or 3 percent just pick one I'm going to set mine to 3 percent because I think it's okay now for this we also want to just change the color just a little bit so we can differentiate between the shapes so you can either brighten it a little bit or darken it I'm just going to add a slight green tint to mine and what I'm going to do now is for the green texture that we just made with the bump on it I'm going to drag that onto my floor here and for the reflective material that we've created uh, no, not the reflective. Uh, for the HDR probe here, which is going to be casting our light, I want you to chuck that onto our giant sphere, which is our world sphere. I should have set that up the stop at the start. So that's our world sphere there. And we're not quite done yet, so we need to add another sphere. So what I want you to do is just go to objects, primitive, and another sphere, and just adjust it so it sits just on top of the floor. You can adjust this in the multi views if you like. Yep, it's already sitting on the grid, so I'm happy with that. What we want to do is uh, we want to drag our reflective material that we created onto the sphere, and then it will uh, apply that to the sphere. Now we're not quite done yet, so we still have a couple of controls to add. What I want you to do is for the sphere, which is actually covering around your world, I want you to right click it and go to Cinema 4D Tags and compositing tag. If you're using an older version of Cinema 4D it might be called render or something different. Uh, for versions 10 and upwards it will be known as compositing so just click on compositing and we'll have all these options here. Uh, what you want to do here is just check it out and make sure everything's right. So all of these should be turned on here. Don't worry about the anti-aliasing or any of the other ones yet for the moment yep all looks good uh, what we also need to do next is we need to go into our render options which can be found by this button here click the render options and we get our little render settings here what we want to do is we want to go to our anti-aliasing and under our anti-aliasing tab here we just want to go to the drop down list and select best and we don't really need to fiddle with anything else on that page so we just set it to best we go to the options page and we turn auto light off. See, if we don't turn auto light off, it won't do the HDR render. So it's very important that you turn it off. Now, the other thing is we go to effect and we go to global illumination, which is right here. And that pretty much activates our HDR render. So if we go through here, we've got our IR still image and our diffuse depth and all that. We don't really need to fiddle with those for the moment. Uh, just checking all of these it's all ready to go and once you've done that just close off the window and now you'll see that we just got our plane sphere and now we are ready to actually render this now the first time you render this it might you might think oh it's not rendering properly but it's just the way how they've changed the way it renders in uh, version 11 which is what I'm using now so now that we've got all our scenes set up and such just hit the render I'm just going to zoom in a little bit to my sphere and all I want you to do is just hit the render button and wait for your image to render which usually doesn't take very long with low polygons which I'm just waiting here uh, shouldn't take too much longer Now you'll see, notice that it actually does some weird things on the screen. Don't worry about that. That's just part of natural rendering. And once the image is finished rendering, which is what we got here, you have now just uh, finished setting up your HDR renders. So, uh, there is another way to do HDR renders, but this is the most efficient way to do it at the moment. Uh, now for those people who do hate who have just learnt the HDR render you might not want the HDR probe sitting in the back when you render your picture uh, which in this in that case if you do not want that 
picture in the background and instead you just want a blank back uh, black background all I want you to do is I just want you to click the compositing tag which is on our world sphere here just click co the uh, compositing tag and you'll see an option seen by camera here I just want you to uncheck that option there and if we re-render the image here you'll notice that we do not uh, have the picture background anymore But uh, just don't get worried if it, if you see this and you think something's going wrong with your render because it's perfectly fine. And there you have it. And that's how you set up your HDR, your Cinema 4D files for HDR. My name's Kinetic and I thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I hope you tune in to the next video tutorial.